Before we formally start with our program, please allow me to read the guidelines. Guidelines for all webinar participants. Always be on time. Dress appropriately. A webinar is a formal engagement in an online setting. Check your Wi-Fi connections before joining the webinar or online training. Use appropriate equipment for the webinar. When using a mobile phone, use a headset to reduce the noise that they pick in your location. Avoid using the speaker phone. Put your phone on silent or airplane mode. Avoid taking a call while the webinar is ongoing. Use the unmute button to prevent the unnecessary noise that will disrupt the program. Release the unmute button when it's time for you to speak or during the Q&A forum. When asking a question, state your name and your affiliation first before throwing in your question. Also, speak with clarity. Be courteous and do not engage in a chat with others while the webinar is ongoing. The organizers reserve its right to disengage anyone from the webinar who will not follow the guidelines. Thank you. Again, a pleasant afternoon to everyone. Welcome to FEU Institute of Arts and Sciences, Department of Psychology. The Department of Psychology will give you a webinar entitled Dealing with Difficult People in the Workplace. I'm Ludivinia Pahutan, one of the staff members of the Psychology Department, and I will be with you this afternoon's event as your moderator. May I now invite you to please join in the singing of the Philippine National Anthem to be followed by the multi-faith prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippine National Anthem. <laughs> Bayang magiliw, peras na sinamana, alam ng puso, sa dipin mo'y buhay. Lupang hiniran, tuyang ka ng magiging, sa manlulupi, di ka pa sisingi, sa lagat at bunok, sa simulat, sa langit mong baka, may pinagang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal. Ang kisat ng wataw at mo'y tagumpay na nagdilingin Ang bituin na tarang niya kailan Ang may di magdidilin Lupa ng araw na walang alipagsinta O'y langit sa piling mo Ang bibigaya na pa ay mga api Ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo Ladies and gentlemen. Glory to you, Almighty. For gathering us today. Give us the fortitude to conquer life's challenges. Inspire us to excel and to be upright in everything we do. Guide us to remain united in diversity to serve and love one another. Amen. And to give us the opening remarks, may I now call on Dr. Ananelia Lopez-Humamil, Department Chair of Psychology Graduate Studies. Thank you, Ms. Levy. A pleasant afternoon to all. Every second week of October, the Philippines is celebrating National Mental Health Week. 
based on proclamation number 452 dated August 25, 1994, signed by then President Fidel V. Ramos. While the World Mental Health Day is observed on the 10th of October every year. Having said that, the Department of Psychology of Far Eastern University celebrates Mental Health Month by launching its Psychopenia webinar seminar series. First of which is the seminar today, sponsored by the Psychology Department and organized by its able and dynamic psychology staff. The objective of the webinar is to provide the non-teaching personnel with remote access to an in-depth presentation focused on the dealing with difficult people in the workplace. This webinar will give information and knowledge on how to gain strategies and techniques in maintaining composure during difficult situations. It will teach us to take control of ourselves so as not to play victims, but to improve ourselves in individual situations and entire working environment. Finally, it gives us immediate actions to take to eliminate the stress and tension in the workplace right away by taking concrete actions. Our able speaker will walk us through this process as he talks, as he talks about the topic on handling and dealing with difficult people, not only in the workplace, but also in our personal life as well. From this webinar, I hope that you will learn the most difficult personality types and the useful strategies to handle them without harming your mental health. I would like to end my opening remarks by leaving you with a quote from a well-known psychologist, Carl Jung, and to quote, knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darknesses of other people. Thank you and happy listening. Thank you, Dr. Humamin. And now, let me introduce our guest speaker for today's webinar. He is an international member of American Psychological Association, International Council of Psychologists, and affiliate member of Psychological Association of the Philippines and Pambansang Samahan ng Psikolohiyang Pilipino. He is currently teaching in Far Eastern University, Manila, Psychology Department, and in University of Santo Tomas. He worked in several universities, including Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite, where he served as a program chair of the psychology department. He also became a faculty of De La Salle University, Manila, I Academy, AMA University, Quezon City, and Far Eastern University, Silang. He is also a, a trainer of TOEIC and a holder of TESOL certificate. He is also a member of TechnoServe as consultant and workshop facilitator and in various companies in Region 4A and NCR. Our speaker was engaged in sponsored researches of Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite, focusing on faculty development program Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, PGH, University of the Philippines, Manila, and in De La Salle University, with focus on the construction of psychodynamic psychotherapy training and module. His researches have been published in international journals. He is a registered psychologist and currently heads in two clinics. <clears throat> Exalt Psychological Clinics in Tansa and in General Trias, Cavite, with focus in assessment and psychotherapy and is consultant of local rehabilitation centers, focusing in treatment of users of substances and local government. He is also provides therapy for distress OFWs, seeking Filipino online psychotherapies. His corporate works include seminars on leadership, mental health, knowledge management, and customer's feedback of top 
500 companies in the country. His forensic psychological works involve expert witness and psychological assessment provider for cases involving annulment, child abuse, criminal cases, and adoption. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Angelo Carlo Pilapil. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, I hope I can be heard uh, well. Tsaka po nakikita ko sa screen. Ayan. I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm happy to be with you guys uh, in this afternoon. Alam ko po na medyo pagod na yung iba, pero I hope that you have your, let's say I can have your attention. Ito po sa ating topic, no? dealing with uh, different, difficult people. But I added there, not only in the workplace, because uh, when I was uh, doing this, I was thinking na uh, should I direct it only on the workplace? Although we wanted to have more concrete answers to it, but I think uh, we also meet difficult people not only in the workplace but on our day-to-day, -day, let's say day-to-day -day lives. No? Kahit magkumit lamang po tayo, may nakikita tayo mga tao na parang medyo hindi natin. Let's say or something that uh, arouses our anger or irrit irritability. Let's say. So uh, I can see some of my colleagues as well on other universities. Uh, welcome po sa ating uh, FEU program. So I would design or I, I have designed this in a way na medyo palatable for us kasi you know, it's quite uh, tiring na uh, sa hapon. So story time po muna tayo. No? So I've been in the several industries already and of course I have met uh, people na medyo, I can say, na medyo challenging. So the first one, uh, I remember when I was hired on that particular company. Hindi ko na lang po i-mention. But uh, what I did notice is that masyadong tahimik po dun sa place. No? So when I entered um, the secretary, it's like parang medyo somehow militarized. So I was asked to sit down. So And then I meet uh, for the interview and you know I can sense na parang there's this uh, feeling that you are being scrutinized from your head, from head to foot. After some time, uh, you know, I usually I, I I go to the company and then uh, Alice no let. But uh, I did notice. No, meron pa ako na rin na sabi daw. Uh, this person said na she had an excuse because uh, I think parang may celebration sa kanilang bahay. Parang kasal po ata ng kanyang anak. So basically, that's a very big event. And uh, she mentioned that she was asked by this person I was talking about that it's either work or you go there. So it's like you don't have option. And as much as possible, uh, our boss was referring na kailangan hindi siya umabsent for this uh, particular nakasal and instead go to work. I was, uh, you know, I, I was a bit, uh, let's say, curious. Totoo nga kayo because sometimes when we hear mga chismis or hearsay, um, napapaisip tayo, no, kung totoo nga ba. And after some time, I had my fair share of, let's say, that particular militarized experience. So we were there and uh, there was this parang mga accreditation something. And uh, we were told naman, to be fair, na kailangan malinis yung table and stuff. And nung hindi niya nakita na malinis, Hindi naman sa madumi, no? meron lang pong mga, let's say, uh, mga aqua flask or tumblers dun sa ating table. Tapos tinapon niya ito. So, I was shocked na nakita ko, hala, buti na lang wala po. While we while she was doing it, at tinatapon niya, uh, other people dun sa company na yun, uh, they were also keeping yung ibang mga tumblers and also yung mga nakalagay dun sa table. So, that's more of, let's say, parang group experience. And until such time na ako na yung nakaharap, wherein there's this particular program I launched. It's more of a voluntary program. But um, uh, the pure intention is really to be able to help. But because uh, it's about like parang Christmas something na po iyon. And I did not anticipate that the subordinates I was speaking with will be able to uh, speak with a particular company who will be able to donate something to that company. So we were shocked because uh, the security guards were calling because and dami daw dinonate ng company. And this person was not informed, no, the boss was not informed na meron palang dadali. And uh, she was, she asks me to come to the office and she was, you know, parang, how to put it, parang she was so angry because uh, it's like the entire 
uh, company suddenly found out na meron palang ganun and there is a chance pala na makakuha na ganun pero bakit hindi sinabi or it was poorly coordinated. But again, um, probably there are some lapses in my part uh, not telling to the subordinate na hindi ganun kalaki yung hinahanap namin. But uh, I think uh, some of you also have some experiences with dealing with those people. While I was uh, looking at it, ano nga, ano nga ba yung ginawa ko nun? Parang uh, I just wanted to go and vanish. Parang gusto mo na lang na mawala at kainin ng lupa no, during that time. Because again, uh, every time this uh, boss speaks, usually hindi niya sinasara yung pinto. No? So everybody uh, will be able to see, to hear kung ano yung pinag-uusapan niya. But uh, I just uh, stood, my, stood my ground. I was thinking, ano nga ba talaga yung pinaka-best way for us to deal with uh, situations like that wherein we find ourselves na parang lagi tayo na dun sa end point. Na parang lagi tayong uh, na-api in a way, no? for lack of a better term. So in this particular research, no, I, I wanted to share with you this uh, particular program uh, which basically comes from Harvard in terms of dealing with these difficult people. And ang makikita po natin is one of the solutions would be a proper negotiation skills. So it's not like uh, parang even though we're not on the business field, but from time to time, you know, communication, interpersonal skills, and this one, negotiation skills, really has to be put in front. Kasi kailangan natin itong mga soft nga, sa sinasabi nilang skills, but these are soft necessary skills. So ano nga po ba yung dapat natin daw gawin kapag napunta tayo sa situations like that? So the first one that has been offered was to hold your ground and breath. So we need to say our breath. So ibig sabihin, uh, we wanted to maintain our composure. So kanina, uh, I heard Doc Anel na sabi, happy listening nga po. So that remind me na, oh nga naman, somehow, uh, we wanted to take things lighter. Uh, on that particular moment. As much as possible, if you are not really practicing this mindfulness, no, kasi skill building po ito, I've always encouraged all of my students, not only psychology practitioners, but all of the people I meet, to be able to acknowledge the, let's say, the power of mindfulness. So, pagka tayo humihinga, that in itself actually helps our central nervous to calm down. So, para hindi tayo masyadong umigit din ang ulo. And as we know, we cannot fire fire or we cannot fight fire with another fire. So that's one thing. Kung hindi na talaga natin kaya some practical aspects of it, so we tell to the person na hindi na natin or medyo tayo nagagalit, we wanted to uh, put or take some time and we wanted to speak with this person again after some time, after some moment or give us the moment or give us moment muna. Uh, this also happens sa mga couples. No? So laging uh, pagka nag na sila, we do not encourage naman yung iiwan na lang yung problema. It's not. It's different from this one because kung iiwan yung problema, um, it's like stonewalling. So aalis na lang kayo sa situations without speaking speaking of it again. But this one is again, sasabihin nyo na let's put a schedule kailan ba natin pwede pag-usapan ito kapag hindi na, tayo, hindi na masyado mainit yung ating ulo. The second one that uh, we wanted to learn is to consider saying no. Okay. So some of you probably have difficulty saying no kasi nga, uh, you know, as we are growing older, particularly in that in our culture, it's like we have been told that we always have to be respectful. It's a good thing having uh, that particular values that we have and we pay so much respect for the elder ones. But as we can see, there's a changing environment. We can see this to Gen Zs. They are more, let's say, progressive. They are more, let's say, adamant in speaking what they wanted to say. And we can see that to some of our students, for those who are in the teaching field, and even to our workplaces, merong mas bata. And parang yung mas bata, parang, parang aggressive ang dating para sa atin. But in this case, uh, this one is pretty, let's say, parang old old uh, proposition. Uh, it's like sandwiching, kung ano man yung comment natin. Or kung ano yung sasabihin natin, for example, if we are about to say no. So, I'll, I give you here one example. Kunyari, meron tayong kasamahan na sinabing, I cannot work in the office and I would really prefer to do it online. So, probably some of us can relate to it kasi medyo nasanay na po tayo to do things online and transitions usually create anxieties. So, in this sense, what we wanted to say is basically to acknowledge first yung, let's say, value ng tao na yun. After that, we firmly say, no, and then after which, 
we can say a posi positive affirmation or let's say a compromise. So I gave here one example. I acknowledge your value in our team and the energy you bring and it is necessary for us to have you in person. Okay, so that's one. Very positive. So we are telling na kailangan natin yung tao na yun. Hindi natin sasabihin na hindi pwede, for example, or hindi din tayo magre-respond na, eh di wag kung ayaw mong pumunta sa company, right? So the next sentence that we want to do to say is that we cannot have you doing online for now. So that is where the negative thing comes in. So yung sinasabi natin na no. And then the last one, we end our statement with a possible compromise. Maybe we can have a conversation about more flexible work time for you. So meaning to say, uh, again, hindi na sa sacrifice yung parehas yung gusto, but at the same time, you're not negating as well this person. So you're not negating yourself, but at the same time, you're not negating this person. Another one that uh, I would want to share here is the planning how to deal with them. Kasi kung yung iba, let's say, mas madali, mas madali para sa kanila na magsalita if they are speaking. For example, they are conversing, it's easier for them to verbalize kung ano sa thoughts nila. But there are people na hirap din naman talaga. Ano po. So for example, if we're going to select all of those participants here, no, yan, welcome to our uh, webinar. And dun sa ating live sa FB, uh, you will notice na kapag ka nagsalita kayo, minsan yung iba kinakabahan, yung iba talaga natatakot, yung iba talaga ayaw na ayaw. No? There's a particular study na yung iba gugustuhin pa na, let's say, to face death rather than to face public speaking. Because the finality of death is there, but in public speaking, is as if pagka nagkamali ka ng sinabi, patay ka na. No? So for example, now, I'm doing public speaking. Medyo nakakatakot din in a way. Pero you can always practice those things. Anyway, andito po tayo. Balik tayo sa ating negotiation skills. Plan how to deal with them. So if hindi tayo sanay na makipag-usap sa kanila very directly, you may write them down. So if it doesn't work, meaning to say, again, alam mo na nauutal ka, for example, or you know that you get, you will get emotional, you write these things. Kasi pag sinulat nyo, you have the chance to actually review what you really wanted to say. And at the same time, you can, re you can you know, change it, reverse, or let's say, what's the proper term? Anyway, revised. Yan. And at the same time, yung moment na sinusulat mo siya, hindi ka nang ganun ka emotional. If you acknowledge the emotional state and the reasonable state, you are capable of combining them if you are in a, an environment na safer for you. So if it is safer for you to write them down, then uh, I would suggest na gawin nyo siya. Isulat nyo siya, tapos ibigay nyo. What makes it especially effective as well is that based on my observation is that pagka binabasa natin yung sulat, right, it depends on our mood as well. Of course, if you are so angry, there's a tendency that pag binasa mo yung sulat or yung requests, pagalit din. But also, of course, you do not want to give the letter na highly emotional yung tao. And usually, we end up, when we read these letters, yung nasa medyo maayos yung mood natin. So that's one thing. And if it is in written form, aside from having it in black and white, ano, na meron kayong pinakawang ang dokumento, it's, it is not pressuring the person to respond immediately. So kapag uh, ikaw ay nakipag-usap sa kanya, and again, you wanted to deal with this person because there are some problematic behavior, it will be more absorbed through written form kasi hindi masyado magiging defensive yung kausap natin. Okay? So I hope uh, you will be able to try this. If not, this one is another one. Build, bridge, and find common denominator. Um, again, like what we have said, we have this fair share of experiencing difficult people. And kasama naman lagi yun sa pagtanda natin. If you are working on different industries or as you again transfer from one company to another company on even on our daily daily commutes, for example, you see people na ayaw mag-abot ng bayad sa jeep nila. Yung mga simpleng bagay lang. And in my practice, every time that I make some talks, for example, like this, I, I would want to always draw on my experiences. And how do I connect to certain clients of mine that is quite far from my own experiences? For example, if there are people na, let's say, namatayan ang kanilang anak, even though you don't have that same exact experience, but the humanity and the connection of it, right? The emotional feeling or the emotion of grieving is, let's say, in there. Because I do have some experiences of, let's say, uh, death of a, of a loved one as well. So I draw on that common denominator. And so I can see paano ba magre-react itong taong to. Because you are mindful as well while you are experiencing that kind of particular emotion. So this thing, 
um, pag nakita niyo, for example, one of the things that I have always wondered, that the company is always a mixture of, let's say, old people at saka new people. And sometimes, yung mga old people, of course, we acknowledge them for their loyalty. Pero sometimes, they are also the one na parang, there's some sense na parang they demand certain level of respect. And I'm using the term demand. No? Kasi kunyari, yung sa mga nasa public school, this is one of the observation of my friend. One of my one of the observations na parang sasabihin sa kanila, hindi man lang sila bumabate. No? Yung mga ganong comments. And at the same time, the company of course needed mga young bloods because we wanted to introduce ano ba yung, let's say, new technology. Not only that, not the idea. We wanted more dynamics and stuff. And we also have that experience. No? Na tayo ay naka-experience na na bata, bago tayo sa company, paano ba tayo nakikisama? So when you see itong bagong dating sa company, sometimes parang mahihain sila. And you might interpret it as if na parang ayaw lang mamansin, ayaw lang makisama, for example. We are so immediately into labeling these people. And that actually stops us from knowing them. So instead of going onto that or drawing conclusions, ano ba yung kanilang, uh, let's say, behavior, you try to look at it na Why is it like that? You make yourself become curious. Bakit kaya ganun sila mag-behave? Because there's always explanation to it. These are all people and lahat naman ng tao nag eh. So before they show this particular behavior, they have been shaped by certain circumstances that they had experienced. So I think it's much better again for us to always look, bakit kaya ganun sila kumilos? We have to consider these people as a person's of worth no? as we are studying in the field of psychology. Because I think most of the people here are in psychology field. And of course, I think uh, this one is very effective as well to think in the long term. So I just added here this one, although hindi kasi nabanggit ni Susan uh, Heckley, ito, Heckley, that in relationships, for example, kahit kayo nasa couple, uh, couple relationship, we are always expecting that people will be contributive of the 50% of the relationship. Meaning to say, the effort should be coming 50-50 from both of you. Sabihin, hindi, mo, hindi ka pwedeng mag-take so much doon sa 50% na yun, or give so much sa relationship na yun, more than 50%. Because the time will come na ikaw mismo mapapagod. And at the same time, if you're the one who's always saying yes, let's say, lagi kang nagbibigay sa ibang tao, there is a tendency that your kindness will be abused consciously and unconsciously. So for example, lagi tayo, say, oh nang oo, no, uh, even though it has been sacrificing so much of your, let's say, of your well-being. And yung boss mo, dahil hindi ka naman nagsasalita, kunyari, isipin niya, oh, ano kaya ang gagawin natin pagdating ng December, for example? Sino kaya mag... Uh, mag uh, gagawa ng program, for example. So, syempre, dahil ikaw yung lagi niyong maasahan, ikaw na lang din yung may iisip niya. But at the same time, mahirap namang i-maintain lagi itong 50-50% formula. Sometimes, there is a tendency na 30% lang yung nabibigay natin sa relationship, right? And 70% naman dun sa kapila. We have to be mindful. No? Paano ba yung power struggle that we have in any kind of relationship? Because if we take it in the short term, magkukwit na lang tayo na sasabihin natin, Let's say, ano ba yan, uh, hindi, hindi na ako makapagsalita dito sa boss ko, for example, or wala na ako masabi dito sa colleagues ko or dito sa aking relationship. I really do have some problem. But when you take it in the long term, sometimes mag-shift naman yan na mapupunta naman sa'yo yung 70% effort and 30% yung effort sa kanila. So you see, if we are telling to ourselves that we wanted to have and you know to really maintain this interpersonal connection with this person, we wanted to always take this long-term, let's say, vision. Na again, probably sa ngayon, tayo yung nagsasakripisyo. Pero after some time, pwede namang sila yung nagbibigay sa atin ng favor. So those are some practical solutions. Now, when I was doing this uh, particular uh, presentation, I was thinking, um, whenever I adapt it to myself, it's very difficult. It seems like parang napaka-straightforward. Pag nandiyan na si boss and sinasabihan ka, hold your ground down, hold your ground now, at saka breathe. But sometimes, it doesn't work that way. At some point, sasabog ka talaga. Gusto mong i-defend yung sarili mo. Because in reality, our behavior is determined by the current thought 
current feeling and current environmental circumstances. And hindi ibig sabihin na kung hindi ka sumasagot ngayon, hindi ka nasasagot din bukas, right? Depende yun sa mood, for example. Kung na-traffic ka na, feel parang Murphy's Law na lahat na ng uh, problema dumating ng araw na yun. So definitely, iba yung way of you interacting with your children, for example. So when we know that there are some practical solutions, I think we also have to recognize, no, go back tayo dun sa ating basics. So this one, I, I really enjoy going back to Sigmund Freud's, uh, let's say, iceberg metaphor. Now, there is this surface level, and that surface level is much more practical. When we attend webinars like this, gusto natin practical na, ano ba bang gagawin ko pag, on this particular circumstance? Pero hindi naman siya laging applicable from, again, from one situation to another situation, pwedeng ibang kultura nitong kumpanya na to and ibang kultura din yung isang kumpanya. And it seems like you holding your ground or telling na time, time out muna, pwedeng gumana dito, pwede ding hindi gumana dun sa kabila, right? So what's, what's much better is to actually change not only this surface level, but yung nasa inner level natin, on the subconscious level. Because I think that is where more natural yung pag-change or pagbabago na ating behavior. So in here, I'm just sharing all of those things that I think we can all apply and I hope you will be able to apply to slowly change this, again, subconscious or put it into our subconscious so that it will manifest into our surface behaviors. So the first one is uh, identifying types of toxic people. So yung kanina pong shinare ko, uh, I was looking at this one kasi for fun to, so that at least it's easier for us to categorize. So naman talagang theory or law telling us that these are the, peop- the, the people you will be meeting again from one company to another company. But parang siyang mas controlling. You know? Tries to control everything around them, needs to be in charge of every decision, makes you feel like you cannot do anything right. So yun yung naramdaman ko. No? I think this is the best description of that boss I was telling earlier. The first thing that I would suggest is for you to be able to identify the problematic behavior. Because if we're capable of identifying the problematic behavior, pwede na natin siyang masolusyonan unti-unti. Okay? Kasi kung hindi natin alam yung problema, an- saan natin huhugutin yung solution in the first place? So another one, fun, is the green eye. So cannot be happy for other people's good fortune. Please, the victim! minimizes other people to feel better about themselves. So parang sila yung pagkinuwentuhan mo ng problema, sasabihin nila, naku, buti ka nga ganyan eh. Ako nga ganito yung naranasan. So parang na-invalidate ka kapag ka nasasabihan mo sila. They're also the one na parang lagi nalang nagiging center of attention din. Parang medyo kadikit ni drama magnet. The drama magnet stay, uh, says down, feeds off gossip and drama. Drama seems to follow them. They create it. it puts you in uncomfortable positions. Um, probably from time to time. I don't know if you did experience that, pero baka meron na tayong experience na naging biktima tayo ng rumors, right? Rumor mongers. There are people like that who really relish on speaking about or talking about other people. And that gossip is quite difficult to, let's say, change. It really has to start not only on the individual effort, but within the community effort, or meaning to say within the, within the organization that you are working with. But anyhow, let's further identify the energy vampire. Sabi nga nila, tatlong bagay no, sa ating perma. No, how will you identify that you are in a healthy relationship? Number one is that it should be genuine relationship. Totoo. Number two, it should be supportive relationship. Supportive but not in a way that you are being tolerated dun sa mga maling decisions na ginagawa mo. So meaning to say, if you receive feedback from a person na, uy, huwag ka na umabsent kasi uh, eto, napapansin na ni post, for example, na pagka nag-vacation leave ka or pag nagsisick leave ka, nasa vacation ka naman pala. And then the third one is, yung parang pagkasama mo sila, nadidrain yung energy mo. For some reason, you cannot identify what's in there, but probably one of the reasons is that sila yung mahilig mag-complain. So, could be that they can be the energy vampires. So, draining you from your, en- draining your energy creates problems and feeds on the negativity na parang wala din sila nakikita ng tama dun sa organization. So, you will always meet people like that. The other one is the narcissist. So, as if they only take care about themselves. Sometimes, they do lack empathy as if they don't understand other people's situations. And they truly believe that they are better than everyone around them. And of course, uh, one of the most challenging people that you can deal with, yung compulsive liar. For them, uh, they really do enjoy, for example, white lies. They may manipulate 
and they may again they can master this guilt trips there's bullying i was i was attending this particular webinar and they're they're talking about bullying in the workplace but more than the bullying experience because this uh, this speaker na naattendan ko was actually doing a lot of research in terms of criminal behavior and he mentioned that in normal population let's say 1% can be psychopath and for psychologists are we are quite familiar with psychopathy that they relish on violating other people's norms pero hindi lahat na aprehende there are people psychopaths they can be very let's say intelligent they are master of these guys for example may mga nakikita natin sa Netflix na let's say killers because they're capable of let's say bringing themselves n- not their true selves but they can go in certain company actually and slowly influence because they 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 can somehow go back and forth to that feelings of being manipulative or being manipulative and at the same time the person who seems to be very understanding and a person as someone who seems to be very trusting or somebody you can easily trust so that's the challenge uh, of course iba din naman yon yung bullying in the workplace but i hope that we become more aware na may meron talaga mga ganung tao so one thing that i wanted to share in this case is that after identifying problematic behavior i would also want you guys to become more aware of again yung sinasabi nating labeling labeling is one of those automatic negative thoughts right na shinier sa atin sa ating cognitive behavioral therapy let's say we're in may merong particular belief ang isang tao that he keeps on labeling himself. Na kunyari, if you tell to yourself that you are a loser, every time that you do something, parang half-hearted ka kasi lagi mo sasabihin na talo ka naman before mo pasimulan yun. But this labeling always start from other people. Eh. So when we meet other people and we start labeling them like this, they may slowly actually label, the, label themselves like that. So pag lagi nating sinasabi, nako, masyado ka naman madrama, and everybody is telling that to this person, Aside from them, probably, yes, they may gain insight. But at the same time, again, the ripple effect of it, the negative ripple effect of it is that they may label themselves na drama na nga lang sila. O sige, drama na nga lang ko. I'll just embrace this persona since other people know me this way. So in that sense, hindi natin siya natutulungan eh. There is this sense that we're just like, we are the ones who's bullying this person because we are labeling them as if they are the toxic people. And at the same time, we wanted to make sure that on the surface level and at the subconscious level, we wanted to see and deal with the problem na hindi yung tao but yung behavior niya yung problema. So again, for psychology majors here or kung hindi man tayo may, uh, psychology majors, we have to be aware na lahat man tayo buo ng, let's say, may babuti at saka hindi mabuting ugali, right? And pag nakikita mo lang yung hindi nilang magandang ugali and you associate it with their entire personality, you become blinded as well. So baka ikaw nga din yung nag- nagkakaroon ng toxic behavior. So again, I hope shifting this perspective na hindi yung tao but yung behavior, yung problem, problem uh, something that we have a problem with. And as we know, behavior is learned and definitely it can be unlearned as well. Pangalawa po, uh, not only in the practice of clinical field, but becoming mindful is always a good thing. I really do hope na mas ka- makaskade natin to sa community level. No? Ano po ba tong pagiging mindful? For example, uh, I just wanted to give one experience. Uh, I think uh, every time I discuss emotions, emotion can always be a source of information about who we are. A lot of people always, let's say, associate it that emotions can be outsourced. Meaning to say, when we get irritated kasi may nagkat ng linya, we always blame the person na nagkat ng linya that makes us irritated. But in reality, it can be, let's say, trigger. But you getting irritated, even though tapos na yung incident, it speaks about who we are. And maybe one of the message of you getting irritated is that you have low patience. Or probably, you value equality and fairness. That's why you get so angry kapag ka merong sumisingit sa pila, right? So it speaks more about who you are. So let me share a bit of my experience. No? One of the things, problemado ng mga teachers, problemado ng teachers, problems of teachers is that 
um, pag-late yung submissions ng students, right? We have a tendency na mag-cram din sa pag-submit ng grades kasi we also have deadlines to meet. And there's was, there was this incident where I have a student, submit siya ng late, uh, three times na siyang bagsak dun sa subject. Cool lang. And I was, you know, getting annoyed. I said, ba't ka papasok ng prelim and then sasubmit ka ng finals? No, yun lang kasi yung kanyang appearance. And then, chill lang naman talaga siya. I was getting annoyed. But after that, no, I, I did... Uh, graded it as objectively as I can, of course, with proper deductions. The next day, nag-submit din siya ng late dun sa isang colleague. I was observing the colleague, uh, the colleague, the yung, yung teacher na yun. And she just get it. Uh, parang very, uh, very cordial. And it seems like she was not affected by things. No? Na parang, I was thinking, inaanoy ako ng studyante ito. Pero bakit hindi naman siya ina- hindi naanoy itong professor na to? That is the time that I become more mindful. Again, yung sinasabi ko of what is the message behind that emotion. Aside from highlighting that there is a difference between the level of tolerance, I have to look unto myself. Tatong bagay yung nakita ko. Number one is that probably because I value diligence and again, uh, consistency. Number two is probably I value so much perfectionism. And probably number three, I value so much the sense of control. And I know I wanted to retain the sense of consistency and diligence. But in terms of perfectionism, I think I need to work it out. And in terms of sense of control, I have to do something about it as well because it's not helping. And for us to change that behavior, we have to look at the reasons why. But particularly for teachers, now we have a tendency to to be attached to perfectionism. Why? Because one thing, probably when we were young, we have been rewarded so much when things are going well and we are punished kapag ka hindi perfect yung nagiging output. But at the same time, we as a teacher, we are pressured by the society to always teach what is correct. And that 100% correctness slowly leaks, not only to our lessons, but also in our, let's say, interpersonal relationships. And that is one thing that I, I needed to work out. Na parang, wait, hindi naman talaga applicable yung perfectionism on this particular problem, let's say. And the sense of control, where, where does it come from? Maybe because lahat tayo merong sarili-sariling struggle. And as we can see, it's very difficult to, to maintain certain status in the society. Lalo na yung mabilisan, yung pag-angat, right? As a teacher also, there is a tendency that we have been so respected by a lot of students that it gives us an illusion that everybody should be respecting us. Of course, that is a common uh, common, common code, no normal code. But maybe we are bec- becoming more prideful, thinking that we are above other people. So I hope that you also find your own, let's say, mindfulness and finding meaning to your emotions, to your own thoughts, and to your own behavior. Because this sense of control, maybe that is also the one that makes us feel that we can change the person. So kapag may nakikita tayong hindi maayos na work, workmate, we feel na kailangan magbago to based on the parameters we have set. And I think not only to the therapy session, but we have to be mindful na hindi naman talaga natin kayang kontrolin yung ibang tao eh. What we can only do is to influence them or create these ripple effects. When you do proper behavior, maybe makikita nila, hmm, at pala bumabati din ako kasi ang saya pala ng pakiramdam pag binabati ako. So next time, magugulat kayo, hindi pala bati, bumabati na kayo kasi you started that triple effect. Okay, number three, pasensya na po, medyo napapakwento. I said, iklaan ko lang kasi baka yun ba yung naantok na pangatlo, develop empathy. Another one is, why am I tolerating, right? Uh, the usual question is, pagka tayo may, let's say, may nakakaaway, but ba't tinotolerate ko itong tao na ito? I, I just wanted to quit or to resign or whatever. But maybe we can somehow correct the compass. Baka may problema din tayo in understanding sympathy versus empathy. Maybe the problem is that we thought we are sympathizing so much with this person and we are getting the toxicity within it. Kasi, it's not healthy to start and always sympathize. Parang sa work po, again, sa clinical field, when you always, again, attach yourself to the problems you are dealing with, you will get affected. You start getting the cross of other people. 
Na parang, you're so aware that there is a problematic behavior and you feel, ano ba to, bakit naninigarilo to within the premises? No, it reflects on the, again, the values of our institution and stuff. You're sympathizing so much, right? That maybe it's becoming toxic as well. So I've always used this. No? I think this particular uh, metaphor is always effective in understanding ano nga ba yung empathy. So as you can see, meron po tayong tatlo, apathy, empathy, sympathy. Singit na natin si Piti. So I always discuss, when you say apathy, walang pakialam. Suppose they are seeing person, yung nasa gitna, na nalulunod. So say apathy, walang pakialam. Si Piti, wala lang siya, no? pero merong emotional response. Naawa siya, pero wala siyang gagawin. But you can see, si sympathy, other people misinterpret it. They will say na, yes, they're joining this. Na parang it's very heroic. But as you can see, looking at it, nadadamay na tuloy yung nagsisimpatya doon sa taong yun. And much better, ano ba kasi si sympathy, sorry. Si sympathy, meron siyang emotional response, pero meron din siyang behavioral response. Compared kay PT na emotional response lang. Si empathy naman, before you react, emotional response, you have your cognitive response, pinag-iisipan natin, paano ba tayo makakatulong sa tao na to? And before we actually do behavioral response. So, when we attend sessions or webinars like this, na napag sinasabing, how do we correct our behavior? It's very difficult to have a parameter because again, we are dealing with multidimensional being. Yung boss mo ngayon na masungit, pwedeng bukas hindi na masungit, right? There are things like that. So, it's up to you how you will be playing the game in terms of using this empathy so that you don't get affected by the toxic behavior, but at the same time, you're capable of influencing this person towards, again, more positive work culture. Pang-apat po, anim lang po ito. Pang-apat, maybe, you know, sometimes aversive conditioning, probably for those who are familiar with the therapy, pagkatakot ka sa gagamba, papahawa ka kaagad ang gagamba, right? Which is usually not, not, can be traumatizing as well. Pero maybe at the state of questioning yourself, no, Socratic questioning, baka naman pwede nating itanong sa ating sarili na baka meron din tayong toxic traits. Kasi yung kanina pong sinabi ni Doc Anel, yung parang kay Carl Jung, that for us to be able to understand the darkness of other people, we also have to touch the darkness within us. And I think if you're watching the Rings of Power, that's also the one that they are resounding on the first episode of it. Nung kausap ni Galadriel, yung kanyang kaibigan, ay kaibigan, yung kapatid niya tayo. But somehow, you can also apply that to yourself. When you start becoming mindful, kunyari sa sarili mo, I get affected, ano, ah, na parang, I get, I get offended kapag ka hindi inaabot yung pambayad ko dun sa gym. But at the same time, sometimes, ikaw din yung hindi nag-aabot ng pambayad ng iba. Because at the back of your mind, ako baka magka-virus. Or maybe you're really just minding your business because you have yourself on you're too busy. So, those kind of mislabeled behaviors is where you're actually going to grow on how you're going to approach things. Again, baka nga nami-mislabel na lang sila. Baka pag sinimulan mong tingnan yung sarili natin na meron tayong toxic traits, you'll be able to draw more understanding towards other people. Na kapag kapag sinabi mo, o nga, no, ang init ng ulo ko pag kinakausap ako, kunyari, hating gabi. Pero sometimes, there is a tendency na ako din yung makikipag-usap. Meron akong kailangan itanong kasi it's very, very important. And then there is this colleague of yours who's about to ask 10 and you can easily put into yourself that you're very anxious doing it. Probably this person is also feeling very anxious before he asks or she asks you at that midnight, no, that particular question. So you see, always be mindful that people is a combination of goodness and badness. And when you get trapped to the thinking that all people are bad, then uh, you know it's close to impossible that you grow from this, uh, again, mindfulness or understanding other people better. And the number five we have here, setting boundaries. One of the things that we will notice in Filipino culture is that parang hindi tayo masyadong aware. Parang akala lang natin may passivity at saka aggression. After all, parang itong mga gantong talks naman hindi, hindi na kakaskate sa mga elementary level. Pero in reality, meron na yung nasakit na, na yung assertiveness. So this is a combination of passivity, meaning to say we're just considering other people's needs, Pero aggressiveness, we're just meeting our own needs, but in assertiveness, we're compromising. We're mixing these needs. So for a more surface level or practical level, I think for those people who, who find it difficult to become more assertive, I give these three things, yung parang pattern natin sa English. 
we can say apologize. Right? If this is, we are about to say no to certain requests, we can apologize. We give reason why we are not, let's say, uh, ano to, parang giving consent or we are not approving kung ano man yung request nila. And we just propose certain solutions. Because again, a person will feel na mas okay sa kanila kapag ka meron pa pala silang alternative. So for example, sorry hindi ko magagawa yan ngayon. Kunyari may inuto sa inyo, eh, kayo na naman yung gagawa, for example. Medyo busy sa pag-encode ng grades. So for teachers there na busy or kunyari meron kayong ginagawa, you can put there. You're not lying here, you're just stating the facts kasi baka nga busy talaga kayo. And of course, the last one is, try mo lumapit kay Carl. Baka hindi niya alam, baka hindi niya naisip na si Carl pala, let's say, is also open to helping people out. So in here, hindi mo iniiwan sa era yung isang tao. Instead, you're going to give him an alternative na baka meron pang maitulong or sa paglapit sa'yo, hindi man niya nahingaan ikaw ng tulong pero nakapagbigay ka naman ng solutions para ma-address niya yung problema. So again, apologize, give reasons and solutions. Sometimes, as you grow older, napapansin nyo, hindi na tayo nagbibigay ng solution. We just apologize. Sasabihin natin, sorry, hindi ko magagawa yan ngayon. And we just probably give reason. Medyo busy sa pag-encode ng grades. And probably pagka matanda-matanda na tayo, we just apologize. Sorry, hindi ko yung magagawa ngayon. Maybe that's leaning so much, uh, so not so much, no? in the spectrum of aggressiveness. Siguro nasa 6 or 7, kung pang 5C aggression. So, I think it's much polite if we will be able to complete this. So that we don't leave them hanging. Parang bakit kaya? Ba't ayaw niya kayang gawin? So at least nakaklarify. And of course, last one, aside from us, aside aside from us, always thinking na baka ano to, uh, you know, as we become more mindful, we meet this kind of people and we try to label them narcissists, let's say, maarte, tamad, mayabang, chismosa. And probably each of us have these, uh, let's say, uh, experiences as well. Na-meet na natin sila. And again, we have a tendency to always label these adjectives as difficult. But you see, guys, even us can actually have this kind of attitudes. If you find it very difficult, to become more mindful in yourself. You can start with looking at observing other people. You can start observing your friends so that somehow this difficulty, this difficult behavior can be changed to probably more toned down approach, which is baka different lang sila, hindi naman sila difficult. So let's start. For example, Yung chisme, chismosa niyong kaibigan, hindi niyo naman basta-basta sasabihin chismosa, right? On the, on the subconscious level, at the back of your head, you are labeling them as palakwento. Yung kaibigan mo na tamad, you might say, this person is overwhelmed. Kaya ayaw niyang mag-yes, for example. Yung kaibigan mo mayabang, for example, you just tell na confident lang naman yung kaibigan ko na yun. Kaya napaperceive na mayabang. Yung ibang maarte, for example, if they are your friends, you would be saying, ah, pala, ayos lang yun. Kaya, ganun, napaperceive na maarte ng iba. And of course, yung narcissists na talagang wala kunyari kinakausap, baka naman nag-me-me time lang, right? When we give so much attention to other people, we have a tendency to widen this perspective. The behavioral approach of observing and learning yung, yung day-to-day task nyo. Sayang naman. It's always an opportunity for us to grow personally and, of course, psychologically and for us to be able to maintain this mental health, not only within the individual level, but also to the group level. So for those people, sometimes you will find yourself, kasi inopen natin yung toxic behavior. Baka kasi after this, sabihin nyo na kung baka nga toxic ako. And you're trying to strive so hard to polish that particular attitude. And sometimes, natitisod tayo. Sometimes, tayo din yung sobrang nagagalit. Sometimes, tayo yung nandito sa left side. Sometimes, tayo yung laging nalilabel na difficult people. It's okay because we are striving to become better. Yun yung mahalaga. That, for example, you're attending webinars like this because you wanted to polish who you are. Okay lang na magkaroon ng sleep. But so long as at the back of your mind, you're always, again, trying to achieve that particular goal to become kinder at the end of the day. And of course, kung mayroon kayong mga bagay na hindi na maintindihan, I'll just be leaving this particular quote for your peace of mind. Do not try to understand everything. 
So with that, I'm ending my conversation with you guys. Uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Sir A. Silapil. That was a very informative and interesting lecture. I hope that every one of us can apply what we've learned from Sir A. Sir, stop sharing for your... Your yeah. What will you think about? Give us his personal insights and reactions. The topic for the topic today. May I now call on Mr. James Dominic Flores, one of the faculty members of the Psychology Undergraduate Program. Yeah, hello, po everyone. Good afternoon, po. Uh, audible po ba ako? Kita naman po. Wala akong camera. Ayan. So, yeah. okay po. So, good afternoon everyone. First of all, I would like to uh, thank Sir Ace para sa kanyang ano, very informative uh, lecture. Talagang, di ko alam Sir Ace kung naalala nyo, classmates tayo sa MA eh. Diba? Sir James, uh, yes, of kamusta? course I remember you. Yes po. So, <laughs> ayun, um, napakalamig ng bosses pero it's full of ano, malaman siya. So I was taking down notes for everyone here in the afternoon on the important uh, points and uh, notes of Sir Aza's lecture. And iniisip ko kasi when we're talking about dealing with uh, toxic people, some of the strong uh, messages that resonated with me is to uh, yung empathy, of course, uh, and to shift and widen our perspectives. Because we have a saying, uh, I'm sure each and every one of us here knows, uh, the saying that first impressions last. So kapag ito ang isang bagay na tumatak sa isip nyo agad, medyo mahirap na siyang baguhin kasi ikakasanay na yun ng utak mo. Lalo naman kung wala ka naman masyadong pakialam sa bagay, hindi siya importante sa'yo enough para pag-aralan or yung taong yun, hindi importante sa'yo para makilala. Kung anong una mo naalala sa kanila, yun na agad yung tumatatak sa isip natin. Pero that does not mean na kung anong unang tumatak sa isip natin ay laging tama. And bagamat kailangan natin minsan ayusin yun at baguhin yun, hindi nagiging madali para sa lahat. So, let me just try to create a uh, analysis or rather a uh, analogy na dealing with uh, difficult people in the workplace ay para lang pong panliligaw. So hindi ko alam kung ilan sa atin dito sa sa ating uh, Zoom na yon ay uh, single and happy na or baka yung iba nakalimutan na yung yung legal face kasi matagal lang happy in a relationship di ba? Pero if we remember these times di ba? when we are uh, when we are for example courting or we have a, a crush on someone suddenly a lot of these uh, traits and attitudes behaviors and characteristics that they have we view it from a positive perspective. Kasi nga naman, di ba, sino magsasabi na uy, crush ko siya kasi ito yung mga ugali niya, chismosa, di ba, o kaya mayabang. Walang ganun, di ba, pero kung crush mo siya, di ba, ang blating ng sarin is parang ay, palakwento siya, so laging exciting, confident siya, which is, you know, confident is very sexy, very beautiful. And our uh, interpretation and the way we deal with uh, other people is very much based talaga on how we view them uh, in the sense na gusto ba natin gustuhin ang taong ito o hindi. And sometimes yung, mga, yung paligid natin nasabi, ah dahil boss mo yan. Hindi, hindi yan kakampi, kalaban yan. When in fact, Diba, na-emphasize sa ating talk that all people, whether it's your boss or your colleagues, 
we have to assert a and create a good and healthy relationship. Diba? 50-50% nga ideally sabi sa ating talk. Although minsan, nagsiship siya, hindi siya completely 50-50. Minsan siguro 60-40, maybe at worst case 70-30. Pag 80-20 kasi na pabor sa isang side, medyo alanganin na po tayo dyan. Right? Pero I feel also like, although ideally we want a 50-50 give and take relationship with others, para masabi natin na... Uh, siya iniintindi niya ako so iintindihin ko siya ko rin siya I think sometimes uh, what we struggle with then is yung ating desire na talagang panghawakan yung 50-50 to the point na nagbibilangan na tayo na oh ginawa ko to para sa'yo so dapat may ano may utang ka sa akin isa gagawin mo rin para sa akin na yan and we are sometimes we tunnel vision and we are uh, obsessed with that idea to the point na nagde-deteriorate ang relationships natin nagiging bilangan na lang po and if we want to create uh, good relationships diba whether this is a professional relationship or a loving relationship with other people hindi po tayo pwedeng magbilangan ng ganun we have to empathize and I understand kasi para sa atin we are always uh, trained or most of the time we are trained to think about ourselves first before others and thinking about others first is a foreign concept to some kasi hindi yun natural diba? but we have to allow ourselves the opportunity to think and be and feel uh, the situations of other people not just in relation to ourselves, but in relation to where they are right now. Kasi hindi po natin mawi-win over ang ibang tao kung iniisip lang po natin ang sarili natin. Pero of course, sarili nila. We cannot change them if they don't want to be changed. And even though we give the opportunity to change ourselves and other people, ang kailangan pa rin is uh, sila din gustuhin nilang magbago. And baka minsan feeling nila gusto ko nga magbago kaso nga lang yung mga kasama ko sa paligid galit na sa akin. Sabi nga ni Sir Ace, di ba pag linable natin, pag tinawag natin yung mga tao na ganito at a drama queen ka o di magdadrama na lang sila kasi yun naman tingin sa akin eh. Di ba? So, kamusta naman yung mga iba dyan sa ating uh, call na lagi na lang napagsasabihin na gwapo, di ba? Swerte niya naman po. So, we have to be mindful of those words. We have to allow them the opportunity as well to approach and change. And when we see that they are making these steps to change, because maybe we have widened our perspectives, then we can start to create a good and healthy a uh, relationship for us and we can reduce the amount of toxicity whether in our workplace or in our lives one step at a time just by remembering to empathize be kind to other people and remember that no man is an island first impressions maaring matagal siya nasa isip natin pero pwede po siyang mabago and kung magbabago naman siya para sa mabuti, then makakatulaw lang po yun sa ating lahat. Thank you, Sir James, for your insights and tips. Um, before we proceed for our Q&A portion, I'd like to invite everyone to please Open your camera and join us in our photo off. It says we'll uh, get the. Uh, yeah. okay. Smile po tayo. One, two, three. Or slides po to. One, two, three. Smile. Open na lang po yung cam. Okay na po. 
Okay, and now to our Q&A portion, the floor is now open for your questions, clarifications, and personal insights. You can either turn on your camera or and microphone or type in your questions in our chat box and I'll be happy to read it for you. Wala pa po tayong question. Pwede pong magtaas ng kamay or open your microphone po for some question. I think our participants are still preparing for the their questions. And while waiting po, may I ask na lang po. <laughs> Bakit po ba minsan ang hirap mag-say ng no <laughs> sa mga katrabaho kung ayaw niyo po yung tinatanong nila or tinapagawa nila, sir? Yes po. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Ano po, uh, sometimes kasi po uh, yung sinabi natin, balikan natin yung labeling we're in, we tell to oh, ourselves that we are the person na parang medyo passive doon sa workplace. Parang it's like, it's very difficult for us to go and practice. Again, yung becoming more assertive. And we have that not only, again, sabi po natin a service level, but subconsciously, we have told to ourselves na parang hindi tayo tatanggit dun sa mga sinasabi nila. It's like, wala tayong karapatan probably. Those are some of those uh, thoughts na pwedeng kaakibat nun eh, within the subconscious. So that explains why for people na matagal nang nagiging passive, it's very difficult for them to become more assertive po doon sa kanilang mga katrabaho. Ano po. Pero slowly, I hope na mapapractice po natin ito. And sabihin po natin na lahat tayo may rights naman po eh. Ang ibig sabihin, um, I've always believed that kindness should not be, kasi ang daming tao na hindi na lang nagiging kind kasi ayaw na lang nilang makabuso. We know and we understand but maybe we can rephrase that. We can always become kind. I've always believed that on, the, on that particular saying that kindness above all else. But sometimes we have to consider courage. And courage should also sometimes come or that, that courage should come first uh, at a particular time. So maybe pagka napapansin nyo na po na hirap na kayong magsay ng no, no. let that uh, let's say, feelings of tiredness or depression or questioning yourself, be your guiding light na gusto nyo nang umalis dun sa pagkakakulong ng label na yun, na probably you can start practicing assertiveness. So, sana po, uh, medyo nabigyan ko po kayo na what, ano po, ma'am? Oh, po. Meron po dito isang questions, I think. I think it's cultural level din. Western think that Asians are passive compared to them. My question is, how do you deal with office jealousy? Mm, so, me Indian, <laughs> ano po? so uh, medyo, I think uh, this one is uh, pretty, let's say, common. Um, there are some management prerogative na kailangan, they have to be sensitive as well. Ano po? Uh, yung diniscuss natin ngayon more of individual changes. Eh. But uh, the cultural change should happen also within the management uh, let's say, management level, wherein, for example, nagkakaroon ng ingitan kasi yung isa na po-promote yung isa, hindi. So, if the yeah. manager is not so biased, uh, it's not so biased, is not so aware, nagkakaroon nga siya ng bias, mm-hmm. doon nagkakaroon ng jealousy, for example. If yung isa lagi na pagbibigyan sa kanyang leaves, tapos yung isa naman hindi na pagbibigyan, pwede din nagkakaroon ng animosities. Ano po. So, another one is that probably the culture was so competitive na sinimula ng company na kailangan uh, this team will be competing with this team. Um, it seems to be good on terms of in terms of sales. But in reality, in terms of our mental health, hindi siya masyado nakakatulong. So maybe those are the things that breeds jealousy. So if we're going to be back dun sa atin pong original na, or yung sa ating pinag-uusapan, when we identify the problem, then we can slowly go on to the solutions to it. So maybe with the company, baka nga pwedeng mas sensitive or confidential or we reiterate the confidentialities of salaries or benefits um, and those stuff. Tapos we encourage more conversations with certain teams, collaborations with certain teams. And I think that's much better. Uh, instead of us also 
telling and just giving these rules. It's much better to to let these people, yung mga subordinates natin, to be part of building these particular rules that we're going to introduce. Kasi pag party po sila ng rules na sineset sila mismo, nagsaset na, okay, ito dapat yung gagawin natin and stuff. Now, they become more engaged and I think that is one of those ways on how we can reduce, again, uh, jealousy. I hope I was able to answer uh, the question. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Um, meron po po dito, anonymous po from anonymous. Is it right to think that I'll just do my best and just ignore the difficult co-workers? Do we need to make effort to make them like us or be friends in the workplace? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's a good way wherein we say that it's okay for us to make effort kasi kung hindi nil, kung walang kikilos doon sa dalawang dalawang let's say uh, dalawang, ta, wala ta, pong mangyayari ano po so if we started to feel become more mindful na baka meron naman tayong pwedeng magawa na para makausap po tong tao na to then why not take the first step if we have taken the first step and they have rejected it for example again it is beyond our control eh, whether they will be accepting it or rejecting it but at least oh, we are creating that triple effects Parang we are slowly telling them, okay, uh, we are putting our one foot forward so that magkaroon na ng collaboration and stuff. So I think it's okay no? to answer the question. It's okay for us to put to put our effort, but we don't have to, again, we have to be mindful na we cannot really control their behavior. At least we are doing our part. 50% okay. on the conversation, 50% on the relationship, we have done our part. So I hope I, I was able to answer the question. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, there's another one po from Kristan. Is it possible po ba na my person na combination of two personalities you presented? Ah, uh, so siguro po yung pinakita nating difficult people. Ano, yes, baka nga po iba na combo na combo na combo na nila yung anim, ano po. <laughs> so there is a chance. Uh, but when we see the person's worth, we slowly feel na nakakaawa din yung tao na ganun. Na instead of, let's say, discriminating these people, we have this, we have that at the back of our mind, of, of our mind, na parang napaka-toxic din nung kanilang, napaka-toxic din sa kanila nung having those toxic attitude too, or toxic behavior. So I think, uh, if you are mindful of those things, I hope we can do some things about it. Again, ripple effects, so that they will have, you know, their own perspectives. Sometimes kapag sinimulan natin learning about their stories, na-expand natin yung kakayahan natin na mas maintindihan itong mga tao na ito. And maybe that is the start of their own reflections. So I hope I was able to answer the question. Po. Another po from the, our chat bank. If ever po you're training or slowly try to say no to anyone and the first thing they will say, I oh, you change how I would react or do I need to say something or is it better to smile and not say anything? Thank you po. Mm, I think a uh, case-to-case basis. Ano po? Pagka hindi tayo close, tapos hindi natin silang initian, then they may find it very offensive, for example. But I think smile, smiling goes a long way. Ano po? Kahit si ma, medyo parang kinakabase mo. Ano po? Pero yung sa pagiti... Oh, no. Medyo nagle-lesson yung ano po. No? Yeah. Pero congratulations po. No? Oh, po no, sa moderator. Pero congratulations, you're doing well po. So I think it's okay no? na parang if they say it na nagbago tayo, I think that's a good way. Uh, uh -huh. We may ask, uh, uy, thank you for example for that. Pero sana yung nagbago tayo sa positive. Ano po. Pero we can clarify it to them. Uh, for the better. So I hope I was able to answer the question. But Ano po? There's another one po po. Maybe this this will be the last po, sir. When do we say enough is enough? It In all aspects, nasa atin lang tinapon yung work and not being treated equally in terms of work distribution. Mm, so I think that's a good one. Ano po? Uh, I've always relied on what the law and ethics says. So if it is violating the law, 
So, of course, meaning to say within beyond your job descriptions, for example, or within your ethical grounds, meaning to say you felt so violated because you have these moral codes that you have set for yourself. And, of course, let's say on the particular group na meron kang kinabibilangan, I think that is the time that you will be saying no. So, yeah. uh, I hope that that is the demarcation point, ano po, na laging may limitations. Again, yung sinabi natin na we have to be aware na meron talagang sobrang bully sa work. And we're not saying that everyone is bully, but there is a spectrum of being bully. So we also oh, want po. to put corrective behavior to them. Ano po? I hope I Thank was able you. to answer the question. Oh, po. Oh, po. Thank you very much, Sir Ace. And now, the, to award the Certificate of Appreciation, may I now call on the organizers of this webinar, one of the organizers of this webinar, and the staff member of Psychology Department, Please welcome Ms. Francesca Marie Sapinoso. Good afternoon. At this point, I would like to present this certificate of appreciation to the speaker and reactor of today's webinar. Far Eastern University and the Department of Psychology present this certificate of appreciation to Mr. Angelo Carlo Filapi, registered psychology, for his invaluable contribution as a resource speaker in the Psychopathian series entitled Dealing with Difficult People in the Workplace. Given this 21st day of October 2022 at Far Eastern University, Manila. Signed, Ananelia L. Humami, PhD, Department Chair, Department of Psychology, Graduate Studies. Mayra D. Landagan, PhD, Department Chair, Department of Psychology, Undergraduate Studies. Rowena Capullo Reyes, PhD, Dean, Institute of Arts and Sciences. And, and Mr. James Dominic Flores for his invaluable contribution as a reactor in this psychopathy and series entitled Dealing with Difficult People in the World. Given this 21st day of October 2022 at Far Eastern University, Manila. Signed, Manelia L. Humami, PhD, Department Chair, Department of Psychology, Graduate Studies. Mayra D. Landagan, PhD, Department Chair, Department of Psychology, and Graduate Studies. And Rowena Capullo Reyes, PhD, in Institute of Arts and Sciences. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jessica. Before the closing remarks, may I remind you that you have to fill out the evaluation at the that found in the chat box. Okay. For closing remarks, may I call on Dr. An Dr. Myra Landagan, Department Chair of Undergraduate Program, to deliver her closing remarks. Thank you, Atenedi. Dealing with difficult people in the workplace is one of the challenges that employees sometimes experience. And through this webinar, it taught us on how to be in control in terms of dealing with this kind of people and how to deal with them and to keep the workplace harmonious. The Department of Psychology would like to thank or would like to express our gratitude not only to our guest speaker, for this afternoon's event, but also to the administration and the staff. We also want to thank our participants in giving us their time to join us with this um, afternoon's event. Maraming salamat po uh, sa inyong suporta at hanggang sa muli. Thank you, Dr. Landagan. Before we part ways, please fill out the evaluation form found in the chat box po. Thank you very much to all the participants and see you all in our next webinar on November 22, 24, 2022, entitled Non-Teaching Personnel, Research Endeavor, Training, Writing, and Publishing. Good day and may God bless us all. Thank you again. Thank you, Paul. Thank, Thank you, you so Paul. much.